Okay, then. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our final council meeting of 2021. Um, I unfortunately, Councillor Ellis won't be able to attend today. He's under the weather. Wish him all the best. Um, I'll ask everyone to please turn your cell phones off or put place them on vibrate. And I'll remind Council of the Declaration of Pecuniary Interest if it arises. Uh, declare it now, or if something pops up later, make sure you declare. We have minutes of the uh, council meeting from December 7th. I'll look for a motion to uh, receive those minutes if they're all in order. Moved by Councillor Webb. The seconder there. Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor. And that's carried. Okay, I'm going to look for a motion to go into committee of adjustment uh, with Deputy Mayor Giroux in the chair. Um, do I have a mover for that? To Moved by Councillor Pomeroy, seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, Deputy Mayor Giroux, take over. Thank you, Mayor Martin, and good morning, Council. Um, I will now call the Committee of Adjustment meeting to order and remind the members of the committee of the requirements to disclose any pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof if the occasion arises. This public meeting is held under Section 45 of the Planning Act and its regulations. And we have one, I do believe, minor variance to deal with this morning. And Alicia, are you going to present our minor variance this morning? If you are, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. So yes, we've got the one minor variance application today, which is A1721. Uh, and this application is for an applicant who wishes to build an addition to the rear of their existing cottage, uh, which will be further away from the high water mark uh, than the existing cottage currently is. Uh, the applicant also plans on changing the front facade of the building, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, by adding more windows and reconstructing a portion of the roof to incorporate that addition. The property owner is Bradley Visser, and the property address is 52 Fire Route 85R, rule number 1531-010-0073500. The subject pro property is 1.27 acres, is zoned seasonal residential, and designated shoreline by the township's official plan. And the property is in the Methuen Ward. The purpose of this minor variance application is to seek relief from section 4.37 and section 11.2.1c to permit the construction of a single story addition to that existing single detached vacation dwelling. And the application will have the following effects. One being reducing the minimum required water yard setback from 30 meters as per section 4.37 to 13.5 meters where 2.8 meters is existing. Number two is reducing the minimum required front yard setback from 21.3 meters as per section 11.2.1C to that 13.5 meters where 2.8 meters is existing. And number three is permitting alterations to the existing dwelling within the high watermark setback and front yard setback to allow for changes to the existing front wall, roof, and the interior of the main dwelling without any further encroachment lateral expansion or increase in the uh, ground floor area. The recommendation is that, that the minor variance application A1721 for the construction of a 70.1 square meter addition to the existing seasonal dwelling associated with the replacement of 40% of the existing roof of the existing seasonal uh, dwelling located within the high water yard setback be approved with the following conditions. That the Pardon me, the, the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted, that any requisite approval be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the building permit being issued, that a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of the application, and upon submission to the building department of this appropriate application, fees and supporting information as required by the chief building official, and that the balance of the information in this report be received. So as was previously noted, the application is to permit the construction of a 70.1 square meter addition. Uh, and that's the rear of the existing cottage with the closest point of that addition being located 13.5 meters from the high watermark and the front lot line. 
there will be related renovations proposed to the existing cottage, which will involve the removal and the replacement of 40% of the roof of the existing cottage and increasing the windowed area of the front yard facing wall of the cottage. And as previously mentioned, the development is not proposed to encroach any closer to the high water mark than is already existing. The application meets the four tests for a minor variance, is in keeping with the provincial policy statement, and it meets the intent of the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. As such, it is my recommendation that the application be approved. Thank you for your report, Alicia. First of all, I will ask, is the applicant present for our, for our minutes this morning? Applicant present? If not, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this, uh, this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application? Is there anyone present wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone present wishing to speak in favor of this application? If not, I will turn it over to the Committee of Adjustment for any, if there's any comments from the Committee of Adjustment, any comments or questions? Mayor Martin? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'd be prepared to make a motion that we approve this application. All right, we have a mover. Mayor Martin has moved this application. Do we have a second? Councillor Webb, second the motion. Are there any further comments? Speak to the motion if there is. I'll call a motion. All in favor of the motion. The motion is approved. Thank you, Alicia, for your time this morning. I will now ask uh, for a motion to turn the Diablo back over to the mayor. Go back into our regular meeting. Councillor Webb and Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? That motion is approved. Thank you. The floor is yours, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so we do have two planning reports here. And the first one, Alicia, you're back on um, with regards to a proposed consent application. Yes, thank you, Mayor Martin. So the application titled B12821 is for a consent to sever a lot. The property is located at the municipal address 35 Van Sickle Trail in the Methuen Ward and is identified by roll number 15310100510505. The property is approximately 2.8 hectares and is zoned and designated rural by the Township Zoning Bylaw and Official Plan. And my recommendation is that Council advise Peterborough County Land Division Committee that the Township endorses an application for consent to severed lands in accordance with the conditions outlined by the report to Council. Uh, it should be noted to Council that since the time of writing this report, the applicants have slightly altered their application. Um, initially, the applicants were requesting permission to sever a 1.39 hectare portion from the subject property, resulting in a retained lot of 1.48 hectares. And this is the information that the report to council refers to. Uh, township staff began a review of the initial application and noted at that time, it appeared that the proposed severed lot may have had difficulty complying with all of the minimum distance separation guidelines that are set out by the Ontario Ministry of Agricultural, Food and Rural Affairs or AMAFRA. Uh, so township staff consulted with the County of Peterborough staff and Peterborough County planning staff subsequently reached out to the applicant to inform them of the matter. Uh, then the applicants had revised their application with a smaller severed lot that uh, appeared to meet the provision, or sorry, that did meet the provisions of the township zoning bylaw, effectively creating a law that should not impinge on the minimum distance separation of parks. Uh, so as a result of these changes, township staff have no concerns with the application, so long as the applicant can demonstrate to the county through a survey that the proposed lot does meet the minimum distance separation guidelines issued by the province. And that condition has been explicitly stated in the report. Um, to planning staff uh, knowledge, no comments have been received from members of the public at this time. And it is my recommendation that the application be endorsed by council to the Peterborough County Land Division Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Okay, I'll open it up to council. Is there any 
comments or questions here? If you Mayor Drill, go ahead and then Councillor Pomeroy. Thank you, uh, Mayor Martin. I do believe that uh, there's been considerable amount of work done on this between our township and uh, Peterborough County. So I don't have any problem. I would uh, make a motion to uh, pass a recommendation today to go to Peterborough County. Okay, I have a mover. Um, Deputy Mayor Durell, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. There we go. Oh. It went off and then on, Barry. Okay. There you go. Yes. Yes. I'm making that motion. Or I'll second that motion. All right. Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Um, any other questions or comments? If not, I'll call a question. All in favor? And that's Gary. Okay, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Council. Um, next on the planning reports, we have Sonia um, Altonen with the um, Declare Property Surplus. Good morning, Mayor and members Welcome, of Council. Sonia. Okay, go ahead, Sonia. My report is to proceed with the declaration of surplus property for that portion of a road allowance bisecting property having civic address of 558 Peninsula Road between lots 15 and 16, concession six in the Methuen Ward with property roll number of 15310100072180. The recommendation is that the portion of the unopened road allowance bisecting the property be declared surplus. The background information on this report is at the December 21st, 2020 council meeting. Uh, council passed the motion to uh, approve the request from Margaret Freighter to stop up and close and convey that portion of the road allowance between lots 15 and 16. The conditions have since been met. She has completed her opinion of value done on Ontario land survey and a title search through land registry was, was done. Sale of the property and the conveyance bylaw will be presented at a future meeting early in the new year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And upon looking at this, it seems like uh, um, it's not going to the lake and that's one of the big things that we look at. What's uh, council's thoughts on this? Deputy Mayor Carroll, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Thank you, Sonia. Just so I'm perfectly clear that the map that was provided to us with the lake in the background, the pink portion is a portion that it, the parcel is to be purchased and everything else in white is either the subject property on both sides, but therefore it does not enter the water. That's, That's correct. correct. Okay then I don't have a problem with this, uh, Mayor Martin, and I would make a motion to approve the recommendation. Okay, then, uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Drow that we go with the recommendations here. And seconded by Councillor Webb. Um, any other questions around this? Okay, then I'll call the question. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. So next we uh, move into uh, delegations that we have none listed. So we'll go we'll pass that to staff reports for information only. Um, we have two staff reports here. And uh, the first one here is the uh, bylaw enforcement activities. Was there any questions or comments around that? Go ahead, Councillor Webb. Yeah, just a comment on the bylaw activity. I uh, love seeing these reports and all the closed on them. So John and uh, Mike, uh, well, job, uh, job done. Job done well again, sorry. I'll get that out. And uh, thank, you. thank you very much for staying on top of these things. Makes my life a lot easier and everybody else on council. 
Okay, then. Um, is there any other comments around this item? I'll do them individually then. A motion to receive the uh, um, bylaw enforcement update. Move, or, so that was moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Um, the next item on here is uh, the summary of the closed session meeting from December 7th. Uh, I'll look for a motion to receive that. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Any questions around that? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, we have a few items here for uh, staff reports with follow-up action. Um, the first item on here is the uh, the plow truck that uh, needed some work done on it. Uh, I'll, is Peter there? Yes, yes, good go. morning, members of council. Yes, uh, the report today is concerning uh, uh, truck unit 1041. Uh, we've, uh, we were requested by council to provide a second uh, estimate on the annual safety. Uh, which is stated in the report, and we are just looking for direction from council on which way to proceed. Okay, then. Um, council, what's your thoughts here? Uh, there's two options there. The one is to retain the truck and uh, get the repairs done, and the other one is that uh, we repair it and put it on gov fields. Um, what's your thoughts? Go ahead, Councillor Pomeroy. I go with option two. <clears throat> Okay. And uh, so you're making that a motion with option I would like two? to make that a motion, please. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Deputy Mayor Jarrell, go ahead. I will second it with a, with a comment, if, if that's okay, Mr. Mayor. Sure, go ahead. So option number two, the council direct staff to complete the required safety and repairs at the current location and to sell the international work star and put it on uh, gov deals what i want to know is when it goes back on gov deals we've spent six hundred dollars or whatever it is to drag it up there we spent whatever the money was peter can fill me in on that in a bit but what i want to know is where we're going with gov deals can't put it on there without without a without a number, and I'm suggesting that number should be between forty five and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, Peter. So that wasn't part of the motion. So I I like to know if. Okay. So Peter, if you could help me out here. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. I think. Yes, I think it would be uh, great uh, if council could come up with a number to put down as a reserve bid on the gov deals, uh, and then we'd know we can accept it or not not accept it. Uh, I just don't know where we'd go if we didn't meet it again. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem with the. Um... Yeah, so is there any other questions around? We do have a mover and a seconder, so we'll have to speak to the motion. Um, the one thing I might suggest in the motion is that we don't list it until probably July or August, get some use out of it, and uh, it'll be more of a prime time to uh, get rid of it. Right now, you might luck out. Somebody maybe had one breakdown, and you know it's, you could try it, but other than that, I would say you know, it probably is better to list it when people are looking for these things, but... Uh, that's just my thoughts. Um, I'll leave. The motion is that we uh, place it on gov deals, and um, Deputy Mayor Joe suggested that we we put a a number on there around forty five or fifty thousand dollar reserve. So, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, I have to agree with uh, Deputy Mayor Joe. And as far as us using that this winter, I don't think we're going to need it. We've already made a motion way back that, you know, we've spent enough money on this vehicle. Now we got it so it's safety, ready to go. And we don't have to spend any more money on it. If we can get rid of it and maybe make a few more bucks on it, then 
than what it was listed for before because it wasn't safety. My recommendation is, you know, get rid of it now. Don't put any more money into it. It's been a been a money pit for years. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Well, if I can speak to that also, um, I don't. I I will still second the motion with the option that uh, if it goes on now. We still have the option to use that if it's not picked up. I mean, I, I don't want to sit in there if if uh, yep. we don't get any bids on it. We can still use it. Mm -hmm. so, okay, that's I will, good. I will still hold my motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, Peter, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, just so I'm clear, the motion is going to be that we uh, have the truck annually safety inspected and repairs made and then go to gov deals. Mm -hmm. And able to use it if required before it sells. Yeah, that's yeah. what the motion okay. is. That's okay yeah. with the mover. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay. All right then. So we. So that pretty well covers it. Uh, if there's no more questions, go ahead, Barry. I have one more question. Now that we've got it safety, uh, we can drive it home. We don't have to uh, have it towed or anything, right? Yes, yeah. through you, Mayor. Through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Palmright. It is not safety as yet. We are waiting for the council's decision on the, on them to have uh, have it safety. So I will give uh, I will give them the go ahead today to uh, go ahead with the safety. And then, yes, you're correct. We will drive it home. Thanks, Peter. Okay. So if there's no other questions, um, I'll call the question. Is uh, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, next on here, we have uh, the hoist that were in the Midtown property to declare them surplus. Uh, um, Peter, go ahead. Yes, to the uh, members of council, uh, this is report is to just seek council's approval to uh, for the sale of the four vehicle hoist that uh, was uh, was is that uh, located at property one sixteen on County Road forty six. Um, um, the, the, the sale and the profits from these will go towards some of the updates that we've needed to make for uh, uh, manage their municipal uh, staff safety is basically what, uh, yeah, it's just the upgrades that we're making with hydro and, and so on. So, okay. All right. Welcome to council for what's your thoughts. Okay, Councillor Pomeroy. For you, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we or put them on gov deals. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy, seconder, Councillor Webb. All in favor of that? And that's carried. Okay, our next item on here is the Old Town Hall and uh, with regards to uh, public meeting. Um, the only question I had on that, Bob, is would, would there be any way of having it like, you know, rather than having it as a part of our meeting to have it maybe even on the 11th or something, maybe like an evening one or something, just to, um, it, I know it's virtual, but it might allow more people to come if it was at six o'clock or something like that, just to get a good discussion on it. Um, yes, know, three, three, yeah, three you through you, Mayor Martin, this the uh, the proposed public meeting is a special meeting. It's not part of our regular council meeting. Okay. So it is proposed as a separate public okay, meeting. Okay. Sorry about that. I think I was thinking I had it marked down as it was a regular meeting. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. Um, okay. And the one, do we have to wait till that meeting to get these repairs done as far as the roof? Um, like that thing there that we found out last week when the tile or the shingles blew off. I think we need to address that. Um, otherwise, there's gonna be a lot of dam more damage done to it. Uh, I don't know what council's thoughts are, but it kind of worries me with the roof leaking. Um, we're just gonna do more damage. Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is there insurance not cover something like that? Because it's, it's gonna be a substantial cost. Uh, through you. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, we, we can investigate the insurance um, if that would be council's direction, or uh, we can proceed with repairs if that was council's direction, 
or we can simply get quotations. Whatever you think, we can we can proceed. Well, I, the reason I ask uh, if we got the okay from the insurance company, then we could go ahead. But um, it's it's not a small amount of money for to replace that roof, and um, that's why we carry insurance. So if we could get in contact with the insurance company and get an answer, either yes or no, I think we'd be be money ahead. So I guess there's two parts here. The first part here is for the public meeting. Is everybody okay with the public meeting um, for January 18th? We'll, we'll leave it at that first to make it into two parts here. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Jarrell. Thank you, Mayor Martin. So the first part of it is the public meeting. With the new Omicron variants, how are you gonna have a public meeting? It's gonna be a virtual meeting. Okay. The second part is, are we talking about repairing the roof until council makes a decision on what's going to happen to the town hall? Or are you going to put a new roof on? Well, that'll be the thing. If we can get somebody to look at it, it's just something has to be done there. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lot worse. And um, unfortunately, we didn't keep it in the budget last year when it was there. Um, now we're into a kind of an emergency here. So. Um, Something's got to be done. I don't know how we're going to do it. If we can repair it, that would be the preferred thing, but uh, it looks pretty bad <laughs> and, and just with my eyes. So, uh, um, yeah, so if insurance can, if we go the insurance route, um, that's an option. But, uh, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, just echo kind of what you said there, Jim. Um, we'll look into the insurance. Hopefully, uh, they'll take care of it. If not, I still think we got to do some repairs there because it is an asset of ours. So, Moving forward, whether we keep it or we do end up selling it or doing something different with it, um, we have to try and maintain the value of what's there. So, so I'd like to offer some money, but if we can't, I think it's up to council have to address sooner rather than later. So, through you, Mayor Martin, if I may, um, yeah, there are options with respect to repair. So, we could do a full repair, as in replace the roof, or we could potentially patch the roof perhaps and make a temporary repair until a decision is made again that's that's a decision for council and we seek direction okay well personally whatever we got to do we just got to stop the water um, from getting in there so um so yeah so we got to do something here it's something that was in the budget last year we took it out uh, it's been in for two years and you know we had just haven't been doing it, so something has to be done. This is what happens when you leave it for an emergency. So I would suggest that we get a hold of somebody. Like the facilities should take care of this um, to get someone to look at it. If it can be just repaired, that would probably do the do what we need to do. Um, if it needs to be replaced, I guess it'll have to come back to council because it is a substantial amount. But we can't just leave it. It's our building, and we can't just leave it leaking. So it's kind of an emergency. It needs to be done within the next couple of weeks. I think it needs done before the next meeting, but uh, um, that's just my thoughts here. Um, so, and it'll be a part of the discussion on the 18th too, uh, you know, as far as uh, the ramp will end up coming into it then. But uh, um, I'm not sure that it looks pretty bad. I don't know if there is a way of, at first that's what I thought, maybe patch it, but I think we need to get someone to look at it and come up with a, a plan here. Deputy Mayor Drew, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. There's, uh, there's several roofers in, in our municipality and around the district. I'm sure if Ryan would uh, come in on this conversation, he can get a hold of them. There's many ways that we could go at this. I think uh, we could put a steel roof on it if we have to replace it. That's, that's one of the options we could have. You're right. If we're going to, if it's leaking, then we're going to have to do something about it. Um, yeah. I didn't know the extent of the leak. I wasn't on the roof and I didn't look at the roof. I'm not a roofer. So that I would think would go to the manager of parks and recs to get done as quickly as possible. And we would have to give him some kind of authority to say, yes, uh, if you can patch it for now, patch it. And if you can't get a hold of council, if you have to call a special meeting, you'll have to call a special meeting. But get some options first, whether it's going to be a steel roof or shingles or whatever. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Are you there? Yeah. So did you hear that, Ryan? Yeah, I heard that. I think we're going to have to do something here. So like Deputy Mayor Giroux said, if you could get somebody to look at it and give us some, some options, um, what needs to be done. And if we do have to call a special meeting, we can call a special meeting, but uh, um, we got to do something there to get the water stopped or we're going to have more problems than, than less. So um, are you okay? Can you do that? Yeah. If we'll get a motion here and see what, we'll see if we can, Get them this a resolution. So, Deputy Mayor Drow, is that a is that a motion to uh, get facilities to look into it and bring us back some options here? Well, I would uh, refer to our CAO whether it needs to be a motion or just direction. I'm not sure which it is. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, we we would prefer the motion. Um, so, the motion would be that we investigate possible repair uh, or full replacement, depending on what is required. Then that's my motion. Okay. Um, do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, with a question. Okay. Um, we should have two or three quotes. And uh, and we have that many roofers in town, so that's that's one advantage, or not in town, but in our township. So I would I would second that one if we get three quotes anyway. All right then. Um, so they're moving in a seconder. Any other questions or comments around the motion? Councillor Webb, go ahead. So are, just to be clear, are we just going ahead with the repairs or are we gonna investigate the insurance? I think it'll all be, I, I think that'll be tied into it as far as when we get the options and we can do the insurance thing. It should be in the motion maybe Deputy Mayor Giroux that uh, in the meantime, while he's getting the quotes, we should follow up with insurance. If if that's council's wishes, then I will refer to our CAO again. We could, if you need a motion, a motion or a direction. I'm sure that there's a deductible on our insurance, but that shouldn't be hard to find out. And it should be only a couple of phone calls. So we should have that answer. So yes, we'll through you, Mayor Martin. If, uh, if Deputy Mayor Giroux and Councillor Pomeroy are agreeable, we will include uh, the insurance into the motion. I agree. Okay. Okay. All right then. So we have a motion on the floor. Um, if there's no other questions, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay. Next, uh, we have the agreement with the. Uh, all right. Go ahead. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, if we could get a resolution to proceed with the public meeting. Oh, okay. I thought I had. Sorry if, about that's that. council's, if that's council's yeah. desire. Okay, so Councillor Webb, you're moving that. Seconder to that. Councillor Pomeroy. Yeah, with a question. Yeah. Um, I think we have an email there from from Lori um, requesting a, a like an in-person meeting if we can. Yeah, and I don't see how we're going to be able to do that unless we wait until this is all over. Um, Bob, you can investigate that, but I think for this initial meeting, um, we can probably do it virtually and we can invite the parties. There's, there's a couple missing off of there. This, um, we have the snowmobile club and, and the jammers, but there is scouting and you know what, it should really be put out that it's, uh, you know, even for the community. I mean, uh, it's a special mm -hmm. meeting and we're looking for input, so we yeah. can't just single two play, two people out here there's I talked to the neighbor there and they they want it fixed too they don't want it, anything done so go ahead Bob yes through you Mayor Martin uh this it, you are correct this will be a public meeting for the entire community it will be advertised on our website and through social media uh there will be an advertisement in the Havelock rail as well uh so yes everyone is invited to attend and comment if they choose and that's good because I know like the jammers are a big part of it and hopefully they'll, you know, reconsider and, and be able to attend on a virtual meeting. But this is the quickest way we can get this moving and it needs to be done quickly. So um, if things open up later and it's still not settled right now, we're, we're kind of lucky as far as there won't be anybody using the building by the looks of the protocols that are in place right now anyway. So uh, um, 
it gives us a little time and uh, we can get things moving here. So, uh, so we have a mover and a seconder for that uh, to have the public meeting and we can, it, it'll be listed on um, various sites to uh, try and include the whole community. So I'm gonna call the question, all in favor of the motion. And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next we have the Lions Agreement. And uh, there again, we did receive an email there. And I'm just thinking from that email, um, you know, the agreement's on here and it's something that everybody can look at, but uh, um, we might be better to defer this until they get the advice that they're looking for on their end. Um, I don't know what council's thoughts are here, but I'll open it up. Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, um, I know we were looking at having a good discussion about this here today, but I, just from my point of view, given the letter we received yesterday, I think it'd be pertinent for council to maybe um, step back and uh, from the conversation today until we hear more from the other side, if they have indeed uh, contacted a lawyer. There's no use getting ahead of ourselves here discussing something if we don't even know what they want, so. Okay. Um, what's council's thoughts, sir? Anybody got any? So, would you make a motion to defer it, there, Councillor Webb? Is that? Yeah, I I could do that and make a motion to defer until we've heard back uh, from the lines in terms of when they're ready to to meet. Okay. What? Okay. So there's a mover, uh, Deputy Mayor Drow. Go ahead. I'm prepared to second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so we have a seconder. So the motion is that we uh, defer this until the Lions uh, get the information they need um, to follow through with this. So is there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna call a question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay. Um, Next, we're going to move into correspondence and the correspondence uh, action items. We have two of them, and the one is to request change of sign on Highway 7. This is a, it's one of those old signs that was on Highway 7 for to direct people off of there to the church. I'm not sure how it works with these signs as far as uh, a lot of times I'm thinking that they pay for the sign and we will install it for them, um, but it's a small sign. So I don't know what's council's thoughts there. Anybody got any ideas here around this or, or go ahead, Councillor Pomeroy. Well, there's no more Pentecostal church, so we might as well take the sign down. Yeah, and I think they were looking at getting one put up to, I'm, I don't have it in front of me here right now, uh, but yeah, okay. So the first thing would be to take it down, I guess, and then uh, see where it goes from there. But uh, um, I think they wanted something else up um, and I'm just, it's because there is things going on still at the church, but it's, uh, I'm just trying to find the name but to get it right, sorry. Anyways, they were looking for the new name of the, of the church to, uh, to be up on the highway to direct people there. But for now, the motion is that we uh, take this existing sign down and then we can, uh, you know, speak to them more about this as far as what it would cost to get a new sign up. Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead. If I'm correct, Councillor Palmer, I made the motion to take the sign down. Is that correct? Yeah. I'd second that motion with a comment. Okay. That we're trying to get wayward signs that are all the same. So yeah. I would prefer to just take it down for now, see where we're going. <laughs> And at that time, council can discuss whatever kind of signs going back up. I'm sure Councillor Webb is aware of this. Maybe he could comment on. Okay, so we have a mover and a seconder. Uh, yeah, and it's the Havelock Center. Sorry about that, but that's uh, that's what it is now. And there's a lot of things going on there. Go ahead, Councillor Webb. Yeah, I'd like to thank the deputy mayor for that. Um, my sentiments exactly. Um, we're trying to get away from this one of sign policy, so. Uh, Hopefully that's something we can, we're working on at Act Dev right now 
with a, a sign slash rebranding policy. So hopefully when we move into budget into the next year, um, as the deputy mayor said, let's just get the sign down and hopefully we can get something that uh, goes with the other signs in the community there to replace it. I think the name they're looking for is Havelock Center. So. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a mover and a second. Thank you to the deputy mayor for bringing that up. Okay. So I'm going to call the question all in favor of the motion. And that's carried. Thank you. Okay, next we have a, an item here with regards to limited maintenance roads, um, the bylaw that we have there. Um, what's council's thoughts on this? It's uh, um, something, this road is, there's, we're doing the best we can with this road. There would have to be a lot of money going to this. I don't know whether Peter has anything to offer here, but uh, to bring that up to a standard to be able to get our equipment in there would be, uh, a fortune and I think that's why it's always been a limited maintenance it's nothing has changed other than there is people building in there Peter do you have anything to add to this yes uh, through you uh, Mayor Martin and members of council yes uh, we do uh, we do exceed the actual bylaw on the limited maintenance roads um, as everyone is aware there's no sand that goes on them uh, we are Turn from going with the uh, the half tons to to uh, to the grader with the ice blades to uh, help for traction, but uh, we do exceed the limit of maintenance uh, by law. Uh, it never exceeds six inches of snow, and and the uh, on certain roads get to uh, you know it, it's hard to describe, but they definitely do get exceeded, and we do what we can throughout the year to help. So, yeah, so these are something that have been around for a long time and and the people in there would know that uh, that uh, when they were moving in there it was a limited maintenance then and um, there was a reason for it go ahead deputy mayor Drew. uh thank you mayor martin I, i'm going to pose this question to peter peter is it a fair fair statement to say that over the years that other managers have exceeded what we were a few years ago Council really didn't know, uh, in my opinion, um, some of the some of the work that went on the roads and and actually providing a better service than what was originally in our bylaws, and it seems to grow and grow. So I'm glad this came forward. I think all those roads and all the people on those roads should know where council stands. And I will be the first one to say that if I bought a property down one of those roads before I bought it, I know what the condition of that road is or when it will be serviced. So to come back at this time and say, you know, I can't get in my road. Uh, I know some of those roads have uh, Airbnb on them. So um, I think we should, stand pat where we are. There's nothing in the budget. There hasn't been anything in the budget and there probably won't be anything in the budget. So is that a fair statement, Peter? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, definitely. Yes, definitely correct, Deputy Mayor Drill. Thank you. So, so the motion would be that we receive this uh, um, email and uh, uh, that would be it. Is that what you're saying here then? At this time, at this time, I make a motion to receive. Okay. Thanks. All right, so we have a motion to receive this uh, um, letter. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Seconding it? Second that. Okay, any other questions or comments around it? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing we had here was an information item uh, with regards to the, with everything that's going on uh, from the medical officer of health. So I'll look for a motion to receive the balance of the correspondence. Moved by Councillor Webb. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Pomeroy, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so we're gonna move into uh, committee liaison reports and um, the first item here is with regards to the county meeting. Dave, did you have anything that you wanted to speak to on that? Well, my driver alarm's going off, as you can hear. 
Timing is perfect. You're muted now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had a full day and uh, I'd like to say to all council and all that's on this new meeting and our, and our citizens, I am thankful and we should be thankful that our mayor sits on the, the transportation master plan. We had a lengthy discussion that involves ORVs, off-road vehicles, and we are going to get a presentation. And I think uh, Mayor Martin can give this presentation better than I can, or a, or a Reader's Digest of, of what's going to transpire here in the next couple of months. And Mayor Martin, if you'd do that, I, I would appreciate that. You can explain to our township our council uh, what's, what's coming down the pipes. So, yeah, the, the master plan, it's a really, it, we've, it's been going on all for almost a year now. We've been meeting and uh, um, ORVs are a big, uh, a big topic of discussion. And some of the issues around the county is, uh, you know, the closer you are to the city, the less important it is to have a, a bylaw in place. Um, but there is a few out there that would like to mirror our, our bylaw. And uh so it's, it's kind of tied up with the transportation master plan. They're going to be doing um, some more surveys and things around it. Um, right now, it's looking like it would probably, it won't be all of the roads opened up. If it was to happen today, I would say it'll be exactly the same as ours, that they would pick sections of trail uh, or road that lead to a trail. I think that's what the people are trying to say. Um, but Everybody has their own views. It's going to take a while because when you've got eight municipalities talking about uh, what they want and it's kind of split down the middle, uh, we're trying to make sure we do it right. So there's going to be a few more um, surveys and discussion around with councils. It's going to come back to the lower tier as far as uh, what we're looking for. Um, and I think we're just looking to keep what we have because uh, it has been working. And we've said that. Um, they seem to go to Deputy Mayor Drew all the time because he's the trail expert. So, uh, um, so he he answered a lot of questions there um, last week, and uh, hopefully it clarified some things for some of the ones that are sitting on the fence. And you know, they're hearing that their people want it, but they're leery on what it and what comes after. So, um, so there's going to be more discussion on this, and uh, we will be seeing more come through our township like all the lower tiers are going to have a lot of say in this on what they want it'll probably be all over the place in the county as far as what we end up with it's uh, probably going to be whatever the lower tier wants um, the county will try and work with them on what roads they would be able to use that's about what I got out of it anyways Deputy Mayor Jarrell. Thank you for that Mayor Martin the only thing I'll say to that is I think council, uh, county council has made a decision that it's not necessary to go back out to the public. It's, it was out there, the survey was out there for several months and it's mainly the lower tier as the mayor has talked about. And council is gonna have to decide after they hear the presentation. And I think that will come from members of the county council uh, or members of the staff of Peterborough County. Uh, I don't know whether the, uh, the Oh, help me out with the name, Jim. Uh, the uh, contractor we got to, I don't know whether they will present it to us. I, I think it might be the staff. So, so as a council, we'll have to make a decision, which we'll be given a couple of options. The only thing about each individual township and not going for all the county roads, and I know you wouldn't get them. I don't believe you would anyway is there are sections four or five kilometers of roads uh, with our neighbors to the west, for instance, if we had six kilometers or, or five kilometers on County Road 6, that County Road 44 dumps onto, uh, it would mean a lot as far as tourism. It could put you right into North Forth and absolutely up in that country, but right now, there's no trailhead at the end yet. Turn around, come back at County Road 6. So we're in the reforestation. So there's got to be some work done. I'm certain if we all work together, it'll be better for those municipalities that want it. And for those that don't, well, they won't have to have it. But 
I think I think the neighboring municipalities that do want them will have to work together. So yeah. it'll come out in the end, one way or another. So that was the that discussion was the main thing at the county on last week that uh, um, would have anything to do with HDM. The rest of it was around. Uh, Dr. Piggott was there, uh, the new medical officer of health. He seems like a guy that wants to keep the information out there. He's already had a couple of meetings with uh, um, some of the counselors, and then now he's uh, um, he was at our meeting and gave us an update on the budget for this year for the health unit and. Um, the COVID money that was there has really helped them through this, but they are concerned for next year when the COVID money has gone, um, where the budget's going to go. Um, but anyways, that was that was the main part of the discussion that had anything to do with HBM. And uh, um, yeah, so I look for a motion to receive the county report. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder. Councillor Pomeroy, all in favor, and that's carried. Okay, our uh, the next part of it is uh, for uh, activity report. Um, so the first items on there were uh, Councillor Webb and Councillor Ellis with regards to maps and property. There were some minutes there that needed to be received and uh, maybe an update from the December 9th meeting. Art. I guess I'll do that since Larry's not here. Um, yeah, we had a meeting last Friday. I guess it would mark kind of the halfway point for us. Um, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it to council, but we're aiming for a July 1st opening for maths and property to have all this work done. So I'm very pleased with the work the committee's put together so far. Uh, at the last meeting, we reviewed the uh, our signage, a lot of the signage we're doing. So we have history signage. The drafts for those are, um, I'd say about 80% done. So we're kind of reviewing those, uh, making a few corrections. If anybody in the community has any extra maths and information or pictures laying around, uh, feel free to forward them to the committee. Um, as well, we're working on the trail maps. Um, for the trails that will be in there, possibly a few new trails. Um, the gateway signage, which would be the big sign as you go into the park. Um, Ryan from Parks and Rec has been working on that, as well as uh, some, I won't, I won't reveal what it, he's uh, planning, but interest for the benches and signage that will be uh, lining the trails in there. So, um, and one other thing, just for the community, um, last month we started the math, maths and logo competition. So we're looking for somebody in the community to uh, create a new logo for the maths and property, um, whether it be nature, animals, whatever. I know uh, the school is, uh, is involved with this uh, competition. So anyone out there, the competition is open till February 1st, I believe. So any other uh, to, uh, to the township? And that's about it, I think. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you broke up a few times there, but we got the gist of it there, I think, uh, Art. But thank you. Um, is there any other any questions for Councillor Webb? Seeing none. Okay, I'll, so we do have minutes there from the October 20th uh, Matheson meeting. I'll look for a motion to receive those minutes. Deputy Mayor Giro and Councillor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, and with mine here, uh, we haven't had we don't get any federal uh, meetings or updates so far. I'm sure that'll come in the future. Uh, um, our MP was on with our MPP at one of the meetings, but uh, hopefully next year, we're gonna get into some more updates from her, um, with, from Michelle Ferrari. And uh, um, anyways, it's, uh, and our meeting with uh, Dave Smith last week got canceled. He's, he's down in the city and uh, it was a last minute cancellation. So uh, his meeting is moved to this week on Wednesday night. So I don't have any updates there. And th with the county, uh, we did the update there. So um, so that that's about it. There's nothing there to, um, the, the Crow Valley Conservation, the minutes there, are, um, I don't know whether everybody read them, but uh, we're starting to work through the budget. And uh, I think Tim is gonna be here in the new year to explain 
some of the things in that. So I think that'll help us uh, uh, move forward. There is a couple of things in there that might look alarming. Like I always say, with such a small budget, there is quite an increase on the capital side suggested. And it's around uh, um, the flood forecasting system update and some work that has to be done at the uh, Marmor Dam. So it really spikes the, the capital side of the budget. The, op the operating side is like 0.8 or something, or it's under 0.1%. But the capital side, if it was approved, would, would allow for some work that we weren't able to get grants for. So we'll let Tim explain it when he comes and uh, um, you can familiarize yourself with those minutes if you like and have some questions for him. So. Um, I'll look for a motion to uh, receive the minutes from the Crow Valley. Moved by Councillor Webb. And seconded. Deputy Mayor Giro. Any questions around that? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Um, so we'll move into new business. Uh, and uh, Councillor Ellis had something here around the way scale. Um, an update on where it's at, I guess, is what he was looking for. So, Peter, did you have anything for that? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, to the members of council. Um, the actual uh, deck uh, is scheduled to be delivered tomorrow. Uh, we have hydro on queue for uh, the uh, disconnection of the hydro and uh, the building, uh, the the hut needs to be moved, uh, but all the concrete's poured. Uh, we are just uh, going to wait to get the deck in place and then line up with hydro and the electrician to make the changes for the location of the pole and um, get the hydro to the new uh, to the new uh, location of the hut. So it's it's coming along. It's uh, it's getting close, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, thank you. Um, so there we have the update. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Drew. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Thank you for that, Peter. Um, Peter, the uh, the present uh, hut, if you want to call it that, that's there, that won't actually, will that be the scale house? Uh, is that where the scale person is going to sit? Will all the, the, the necessary equipment, electronic equipment to run the scale be in there? Will, will it have a separate, separate scale house? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, to Deputy Mayor Dro, that is going to be the scale house. So we're going to move it from its current location, and the attendant will be in that same hut, and uh, it will be placed uh, over beside the scale with the uh, walking deck between the the main scale and the uh, and the hut to provide uh, people to safely get over to the window to to pay their to pay their invoice. So then, Peter, we'll have to kind of redesign the inside of that building. Yes, we'll have to clean it out and get it uh, set up with uh, some some tables uh, for for the equipment and the electronics to be placed inside. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Any other questions around the scale house or the scale? Okay. A motion to receive that report. Uh, Councilor Pomeroy, Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. So, uh, Councilor Pomeroy, you had something for new business? Yeah, I do. Uh, I've got a little note made here. In, uh, in response to the complaints that I've received and in the interest of finding ways to reduce the occurrences of vacant derelict buildings that exist within the township and village, I you know, I would like to request that staff be directed to provide an information report back to council at its earliest convenience. The staff circulate an information report related to vacant and derelict properties, including information regarding demolition requirements and any impediments that may apply. In certain instances, vacant derelict buildings can negatively impact neighborhoods and individuals by becoming dilapidated, therefore causing hazards, becoming unsightly, becoming infested with pets, pests and trespassers. And I think we all know basically what the complaints are and where they are. So I would like the staff to uh, see if we can do something about it as, as it is, we have our hands tied. 
Okay. All right. So I would like to make that a motion and whether it be for the next meeting or. Okay. And I, and I skipped over uh, the oral notice of motion. So we'll put that in the oral notice of motion. Uh, CAO and Joni, is that okay then? Make that as a motion. Notice of motion. Notice of motion. Yeah. Through you, Mayor Martin, if there's a motion regarding Councillor Pomeroy's statement, we'll certainly take that. Okay. Um, okay, it should have really been listed on here. That's why I'm saying it should be a notice of motion, but... Uh, um, Too okay. late, so, <laughs> Well, it's not. It's up to Council here to second that as a motion or second yeah. it as a notice of motion. So um, go ahead, Councillor Webb. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a seconder there. To direct staff to uh, bring back the report on on the derelict buildings and I'm not I can't I don't have it memorized so we do have a mover and a seconder is there any other questions or comments around that motion Deputy Mayor Drew go ahead if I heard the motion correctly in the motion it said at their convenience so there's no time limit on this because that's that, that's not fair to ask. Yeah, at their convenience. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a mover and a seconder for this motion. I'm going to call a question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so next to the bylaw, there's no bylaws uh, this time. Oh, Jim. Deputy Mayor Drew, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I apologize. Uh, for two questions I have. They're, they're not notices of motion or anything, but because Omicron is changing daily, um, if Ryan's still on uh, our, in our meeting here, I have a question for Ryan, I have, and then I have one for Bob. So okay. my, my question is, um, Ryan and I spoke last week, uh, there was a, a nice amount of overtime or nice amount of ice time booked for between Christmas and New Year's there, I believe the 28th, there's a tournament book, which was great. I just wondered if the Omicron and the new rules and regulations are going to affect that ice time, right? Yeah, through you, uh, Mayor Martin, to Deputy Mayor Drew. Um, it's, it's possible that uh, once we receive uh, direction from Peterborough Public Health, uh, if, if there's any changes in that, it's possible. We've already lost uh, one rental. Uh, it was a full day. Um, just uh, some teams have already dropped out and uh, aren't going to be able to make it. But um, at this time, it's uncertain. We do not know um, if the if the rentals will, will be affected. As of right now, we're, we're pretty much booked, though, between Christmas and New Year. So, so one more, Ryan, if I might. So any of those people that has booked for family events or whatever, and something does change, will you get a hold of them and let them know that that ice time is not available? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And All right, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Bob, I know you've spoken of this before, but have we any update on the rapid tests that are being handed out for our municipality and when we might get them for the for the public. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, the uh, situation regarding Omicron is very fluid. Uh, there's new information coming daily. So the latest uh, information we have, we are attempting to uh, obtain rapid tests for staff uh, to use uh, as a municipality. Uh, it's, it's becoming extremely difficult. Uh, the rules have changed. At one time we were receiving uh, tests through the MPP's office. That is no longer the case. Uh, we have reached out to Peterborough Public Health. We are unable to receive tests from Peterborough Public Health. So that remains a work in progress. With respect to the community at large, um, I have been in contact with Peterborough Public Health. They are intending to set up a distribution, um, 
uh, a distribution date here in Havelock. Uh, currently, it's tentatively booked for December the 29th at the, the library, the Havelock Library, for distribution of rapid antigen tests for personal use by the community. That's the latest on that. Um, when it's confirmed, I will certainly let everyone know, but right now that's the tentative date. Well, thank you for that, Bob. Um, that's much appreciated because I, I am getting some questions on that. Um, oh, and we worked on that uh, fireworks policy. So I guess that's a work in progress. Yeah. Um, through you, Mayor Martin, if I could just further to Omicron, um, I have also been in discussions with Peterborough Public Health to establish another vaccination clinic here in Havelock. Um, as of this moment, that date hasn't been confirmed, but it is very likely that there will be a booster clinic coming to Havelock at some point. And as soon as that is confirmed, we will certainly let everyone know. And that's good. Thank you, Bobby. I know I was asking about it last week too. And I, I, the health unit is, they have a lot of challenges as far as volunteers and people working these centers. Um, you know, so they, they can't do as much as they were doing before, but they're hoping that, uh, yeah, they can come out this way. Cause I have had lots of questions around uh, booster shots and uh, um, something more local than driving to Peterborough. So uh, thank you for working on that anyways. And uh, as soon as you get anything, you can let us know. Yeah, for sure. Okay, then. Yeah, and like you said, it's fluid. It's uh, it's changing sometimes twice a day. So, um, you know, um, anyways. Okay, um, so that's the end of uh, new business. Um, before I go to the confirming bylaw, I just want to thank everyone for this past year. It's uh, been a challenging 22 months, to say the least. Um, but we did manage to get a lot done. And, and I've asked staff to uh, come up with a summary of everything that we accomplished last year which was quite a bit. And sometimes when you see it in front of you, you, you know, you say, oh, wow, I didn't, I forgot about that stuff. So um, hopefully we can get some, a summary sheet in the new year with uh, everything that the departments have done over this past year. I wanna thank them for uh, everything they've done, trying to move through these protocols that keep coming out. Um, you know, we've done pretty well, I think, and uh, um, it's been hard. So I just wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas and, uh, you know, all the best in the new year. It can't get any worse, I don't think. So uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, thank you to everyone on the screen here and everyone that ends up watching this, uh, you know, Merry Christmas. So um, so with that, I'm gonna look for the uh, confirming bylaw. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux, all in favor. And that's carried. And looking for a motion to adjourn. And that's Councillor Pomeroy. I always seems to get up there for that one. And uh, do I have a seconder for the confirm or for the? And yeah, Deputy with Mayor. A comment, with a comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I want to echo your comments to all of Council and all of staff. I hope they have a wonderful, safe Christmas, Merry Christmas, and a safe holiday. We will come back and do what we have to do. And that's what we've done all year, this so far. And we will head into 2022 the same way. I know this council is up to it. And I know the staff are. So, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Terrell. Um, okay, so we have a move. Go ahead, Councillor Pomeroy. Yeah, I would like to uh, echo the same response responses that you and, and the Deputy Mayor Jerome made. I'd also like to make the public aware that our office has always been open. It hasn't been closed the way other government offices have been and other townships. Like we don't just, you know, go and, and well, you got a phone phone call and, and we're very fortunate that, that uh, Bob and staff could, um, arrange things that some of them are working from home, but we've made it through and uh, we're trying to please the public. I know it's hard. Some people think it is. A lot of people think it's great that they can still get 
building permits and, and other uh, information. So I would just like to give staff a, a great commend there for, for all the work done during this COVID. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, then. All right, then. I'll uh, call the question. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. All right. And that's carried. Thanks, everyone.